Hello everyone. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Little change of day for our, our live this week. Got Jenna Hay joining us today. So we'll just wait for her to come on. Jenna! Hello! Good morning! It is so lovely to see your beautiful face today. Lovely to see yours. How are you? Oh, I'm very good. How are you going? Yeah, good. Yeah, You're pretty good. good. Pretty good for this Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> morning with Cosmo. We went and got a coffee and now we're here. Oh, great job. That's wonderful to hear. <gasps> Thanks for it. <gasps> Cosmo! <gasps> Wow. Look at that. Just saying hello to everyone watching. That's oh there he is. Oh, that's beautiful. And Cosmo, we're gonna be talking about you later for sure. <laughs> Episode trade, Jenna. I appreciate you joining me today on saying it with Sarah. No worries, thanks for having me. Yeah. So finally, training has returned into week two. It's nice to actually see people. How are you enjoying being back on court? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, I think with everything that's been going on this year, uh, there's been, it's just been a roller coaster for everyone. Mm. And I think for my mental health in particular, I've used basketball as an escape for things that I'm going through. And so with this COVID stuff and not being able to be on court has been rough. So to be back on court, seeing friends and teammates and, Shares is great. She just lightens the mood all the time. So it's been wonderful being back on court. That's really the end of it, isn't it? Bloody Cosmo. Oh. It's okay. We can still hear you clearly. <laughs> deal with that, hey. I think um, Coley said it well when she said that her heart is so full right now, coming back into training and seeing people. <laughs> well, she's a social butterfly, so I don't yeah. know how she's dealing with all this. <laughs> this is definitely a delay for her. <laughs> So you've obviously been with numerous teams throughout your career thus far. What is it about the Flyers that you just love so much? Oh, there's not just one thing. I think the team that Cheryl put together um, is so wonderful. So we have these super outgoing personalities like yourself and Rebecca, for example. <laughs> um, and then there's the more um, uh, shyer type personalities um and then there was really good youth with good veterans so I just felt like the mix of everyone just worked really well um and it was just a joy to come to practice joy to come to games um I think pre-season last year uh, was very um we didn't have everyone uh, we were coming in and out with Opal stuff um Shares was with the Opals as well and then beginning of the season, we just won all these close games in a row. So I felt like it really brought us together um, quickly. And with such a new team, um, I think that's sometimes difficult. And it just, it, just, it just worked. Yeah, absolutely. And gelling is a huge thing, like when it comes to any team sport. And I think we had that really well. And I also feel like JJ and her brownies that she brings or food that she brings most training sessions – just kicks it off for us, right? <laughs> Her food is that good. Those brown, I don't, what was it? Fudge, chocolate brownie type things yesterday. They had like a bit of crisp, but the icing on top, the moist gooiness as well. It oh. was, they were amazing and they were still warm. So, wow. That's they, it. And I, I have missed your cooking. Oh, and I was like, gosh, why do these taste so good? Must be the sugar. <laughs> I love sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Just love sugar so much. Yeah. Okay. So, exactly. so besides me, because I'm getting thrown under the bus basically every weekend, who's the biggest rat bag on the team? Apart from you. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. I, I think you're getting thrown under the bus for a reason, babe. <laughs> no. Come on, guys. It's Leilani. <laughs> No, you bring it out of her because she is just beautiful and kind. And because you're a rat bag, it brings it out in her. I'm hurt by that. She brings it out in me. But <laughs> we'll talk about this at training later, Jen. <laughs> okay. So continue on talking with teams. You've played in Europe, 
America and also Australia. What do you find are the significant differences between each of the leagues? Um, main differences are, so um, America, the schedule is crazy. You're just playing game after game after game. Uh, so you sometimes, if you go on a road trip, uh, it would be four or five games in 10 days. Uh, you're doing like, say, coming from Seattle to the East Coast. Um, and it's full on. So you don't get much training uh, just because of the way the games are structured. In Australia, um, you pretty much just play on the weekends uh, and we'll have, what, three or four team sessions a week. Um, and then Europe. You pretty much just play on the weekends unless you're in EuroLeague, but you're training constantly. <laughs> so yeah. the training um, schedules of all three countries are very different. Um, I think playing styles, uh, Europe is more of a um, defensive grind, um, sort of you pound the ball inside, uh, you get through your offense. It's very, um, well, my team in France in particular, um, it was very... You know, we'd have six or seven people sort of between eight to 16 points. Um, whereas uh, America, it's um, just athletes flying up and down the court. Whereas I think Australia can be a mix of both. Um, you have sort of teams that like to get out and run, but you can also knuckle down and get through your offense as well. So I think as much as there's similarities with all of them, there's also those slight differences in all um, three countries as well. Yeah. Mentally and physically, best league to play in. Uh, mentally for me, Australia, being around <laughs> family and friends, that's a no brainer. Um, but for me playing in America, um, it's something that I didn't think that it's the best league in the world, in my opinion. And it's not something that I thought that I would ever do. So to play six years over there, um, for me physically was, um, a real challenge and, um, something I'm proud of. And you did very well. I uh, have been recapping a lot of WNBA games and I did watch one of yours and I definitely messaged you afterwards being like, okay, Jenna, you I did, see you, girl. Did. <laughs> 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 so hardest road trip you've ever been on? Yeah, so I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, so like road trip in terms of like, a season and um, going on road trips. I, there was an East Coast trip when uh, I was playing for Seattle uh, and we're in so many different hotel rooms in very few days. I ended up breaking um, my pinky toe because I got <gasps> disorientated in my <laughs> hotel room. So I went to the toilet in the middle of the night and coming back to my bed, I stubbed my toe really badly into like the TV cabinet because I think <laughs> I thought, I don't know, the bed, I don't know. I was really disoriented just because there was so many different hotel rooms in a real short amount of time. Um, but also there's been some really hard um, Opals trips, I think. Um, in particular, India last year, I found really difficult. Just so many games. Um, the food just really messed with my stomach. <laughs> um, got like a lot of um, cabin fever, I guess, being in that hotel and stuff. So um, road trips, I would say that, road trip that I was on um, when I was playing for Seattle. But, yeah, I think India last year I really struggled with. Yeah, big time. And I've heard that Europe also provides you with some nice, like, 12-hour bus trips every now and then. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we didn't have too many bad ones. Uh, we were on trains a lot. So we were right down south in Montpellier. Um, and the train ride to Paris would be five hours on the quick train. Um, and the trains were quite comfortable and then it would be like an hour or two bus rides. So we didn't have too many of those like overnight right. ones where you have to sleep on the bus. So we weren't too bad with that. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so you've played with both Seattle and LA. I'm going to hit you with this. Right now, they both come at you with equal offers. Who are you playing for and why? <laughs> oh, um, and this is like while they're in the bubble, right? Yeah, let's say they're in the bubble right now. Equal offers, pay, everything. Who are you playing for? Eek. <laughs> um, I think, oh, that's so difficult. Um, 
Wow, I've stumped you, haven't I? You really oh my have. gosh. The questions that you prepared me with. Because <laughs> um... you're quite close to Candace Parker, but you're also close, close to Alicia Clark, right? So that's Sienna. Yes. And, and then, like, I don't know, I look at the two point guards and, like, Birdie, one of the best ever, but she's, like, been missing a few games with injuries. And then Chelsea Gray, have you seen her play? She's amazing. Mm. Like, to play with her would be really cool. And I haven't played with her, I've played with Birdie. So that's sort of going through my head, too. Uh, Jenna, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt your brain this morning. So maybe we can just move on. Is that alright? Actually, no. I'll go Seattle because I think they're gonna win. Oh, okay, solid. Yeah, they're looking really good this year, aren't they? they are. <laughs> I'm so sorry to do that to you today. That's a lot. Did you really see the cogs turning in my head then, thinking of all of these? <laughs> you were just rattled. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think people are going to find this quite interesting. When you were in the US, you managed to get some work experience and you pulled yourself a job with Microsoft. So tell us a little bit about that. And is that something that you can see yourself falling into post-basketball? Yeah, so uh, I was playing over in Seattle and uh, in the off-season, I had to get some um, surgery on my knee. So I was staying in Seattle in the off-season and the WNBA offer um, like a winter internship. Uh, so there was just a um, flyer on my seat for if you were in the States, because uh, most WNBA players go and play in Europe in the off season. But because I was having this surgery done, um, I was like, oh, this could be a cool opportunity. And normally the WNBA Players Association sourced the internship. But I was like, oh, I've been in Seattle for three years now, know a few people. Uh, so I started asking some questions and our one of our owners of Seattle uh, used to be head of HR for Microsoft. So I spoke to her and she got me an interview um, with the current head of HR. Um, never worked in my life, didn't really have a resume or anything. So just went in there and uh, I don't know, I think the interview went well. Um, and I had a three month internship with Microsoft. Um, so I was working in the recruitment building. Um, and I had a um, project on competitive intelligence. So I was interviewing people that um, had come to Microsoft from their main rivals. So I was interviewing people who come over from Apple, from Google, from Amazon, from Facebook. And then I put together a presentation on how best to recruit from those companies. So for example, um, so it was like after three years, um, the benefits at Amazon um, like plateaued on the third year. So that's the best year to go and recruit them. Um, for say Apple in June, they had, um, that was when their big sort of projects finished. So it might be Cho, <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I'll beat we'll you in one on one. <laughs> time to go up what happened there sorry June. oh you good um and then i had this um, yeah. presentation at the end with um some of the heads of microsoft and um at the end uh there was three different um sectors of microsoft that were like when you're done playing they've got a job for you obviously i'm not in seattle anymore so that's uh not on the cards but it is definitely something i would love to work in hr um post basketball and i think that HR and the mental health work that I've been um, advocating for, I think blend really well. So I definitely see myself doing something like that in the future. Yeah, nice. How daunting for you though, going from being an athlete all your life to just, hey, have a job at Microsoft and give us a presentation. <laughs> yeah. And I've never really, I don't know, you do talks at school or whatever, but nothing like that. I was super nervous um but I had some re my manager was really great he we were I was super prepared um and it went I think quite well yeah lovely well you're a superwoman Jen that's for sure um talking about careers I thought this would be a really cool question for you if you could be a CEO of any company or any brand meaning you get free stuff what are you picking <laughs> just so hard like do so I want, hard like lots of cars do I want lots of clothes do I want like apple products um 
I rec I think I would choose Apple. Um, I think their products are really cool um, and they've been very innovative. Innovative. Is that yep, that's it. Yep. Um, in the past with their products that they've brought out. So I think that would be just a real cool company to be involved with. Yes, yeah, solid. I had a internship at Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> and you're recruiting people from Apple, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I had this chat with Steph yesterday about what you'd pick and straight away we said Amazon because then you can have everything. <laughs> oh. Didn't think of that one, did you? The first one I actually had in my head was Lululemon because I love their clothes. Mm. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd think a bit bigger. Because yours is Adidas, right? I, I would like Adidas just because it's like constant gear, shoes, socks. Oh, my gosh, I love socks. <laughs> Fresh socks are the best. Oh, comfy, right? Mm -hmm. So, Jenna Hey, I consider you quite the role model and you have a big junior following that really look up to you. Who is someone that's mentored you throughout your career and... Who is someone that you seriously admire outside the sporting code of basketball? Uh, I did see my brother jump on before. I don't know if he's still on, but Luke and Matt, my two older brothers, um, have really helped me with my basketball career. Um, I just wanted to be like them. It's why I play basketball. And if I ever have any sort of um, problems or if I ever need any advice, it's those two that I'm going to. So shout out Luke, shout out Matt. <laughs> And then um, an athlete that I admire outside of basketball uh, is Alison Felix. She's a US uh, track and field athlete. Uh, I met her when I was living in LA. She's friends with Candice. Uh, she's just super humble. Uh, she took it to Nike when uh, they were not going to pay her when she got pregnant um, and now has her own line with, I'm not quite sure for the pronunciation, I think it's Athleta. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And she's just incredible. Has won. I think she's the most decorated track and field athlete um, in US history. Uh, and she's just a beautiful person. She's a mum now um, and trying to go to her, it's either the fourth or fifth Olympics um, next year. So she's someone that I absolutely admire. Mm, that's so great to hear. Athletics too. I like that. Yes. So off track here, I heard from a very good source that you were scared of dogs, <laughs> yet here you are, a beautiful mum of Cosmo, who we saw before, and auntie of Gus the Frenchie. <laughs> so tell us a bit about the story behind Cosmo and how you brought to take him home with you. Yes, yeah, so that very good source was correct. Was it Steph, that good source? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Steph. <laughs> um, yes, so used to be petrified of dogs, just did not want to be around them. Um, if I was, say, walking down the street and a dog was walking towards me, I would cross the road because I just didn't want to be... <laughs> Even if it was a little dog. sausage? Anything. I feel like the little ones might have been even worse because they're, like, yappy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I didn't want to be near dogs, animals, nothing. Um, and then Hannah Zavik had a little toy Pomeranian called Oso. And I would go over to her place and Oso was just like this tiny little bear that would just sit on my lap. And he <laughs> didn't want me to pet him or anything. He just, that's just where he sat. And so I slowly got used to Oso. And then over in America, everyone had dogs. And I remember going into um, a house and I'm like, oh, I'm actually really scared of dogs. And they're like, well, dogs are part of the family. So either um, <laughs> you, you leave go or you stay. <laughs> like, we don't care about you. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, um, and one of those dogs was a Rottweiler. Is that Rottweiler? Rottweiler? Yeah. I don't know yeah. Exact pronunciation. Um, and she was beautiful and would just like sit on my feet um, and just a big gentle giant so I was slowly getting used to dogs and then I um, went over to Europe um, and again all my teammates had dogs and we'd go on hikes and stuff um, and so obviously my family was back in Australia my boyfriend at the time was in America and then I was in Europe and I'm like this is this sucks I'm real lonely yeah. uh, so my second year in France um, I started just looking up 
uh, the local like RSPCAs in France um, and I found Cosmo. My parents thought I was having a midlife crisis because they're like, you're scared of dogs. <laughs> like, you're really going to get a dog. So anyway, this is not normal. <laughs> So I took one of my um, French teammates with me to go meet Cosmo. He was like a 45 minute drive away. Um, and she like translated everything. Um, and then a week later, Cosmo came home with me. So we're in um, France and it was great. Just every day off we had, we'd go explore somewhere different. He just loved it. And I was um, a couple of blocks away from the beach. So we're on the beach every day and he just run amok. Um, he chewed up all my shoes and all the cushions <laughs> in my house. And, um, it was definitely a learning experience. And then um, from France to America, he just was under the seat in front of me. Um, so we flew to America and he was there with me, um, which was great. And then it cost me a small fortune to get him back here to Australia. Yes. Um, a lot of mortgage repayments, but um, <laughs> he loves it here and I love him. And then um, it was actually when... Cosmo was still over in America because it was going to cost so much and pretty traumatizing for him to be on a plane for so long and be in that little cage and stuff. So I left him over in America with a friend and um, I was home and dad was like, oh, you're my boyfriend at the time was over in America. Your dog's in America. Jenny, you just look real sad. And so then mum and dad got Gus and Gus is a French bulldog. You would see him on my Instagram page. He's he has cute. his own Instagram page. He does. Gus is French or something, I think. <laughs> My mum runs that page. Um, he's super cute. Um, and so now we have, yeah, never had pets growing up. Um, I think before I was born, mum, dad and my two brothers had um, a little uh, a little dog. I don't know. Um, but since <laughs> I've been alive, we've never had any pets. Um, and yeah. now, yeah, there's two dogs running around. So he's pretty great. Is he around? Let's, let's put him to the camera again. <laughs> What? Because you don't know what breed he is, do you? <laughs> I was he's just a mix. Cross, mm. but he's just a mix of everything. <gasps> look at that face, Cosmo. Oh, he's a bit look at that shy. face. Oh, beautiful. He loves oh. playing fetch. He's obsessed with balls, like tennis balls. <laughs> um, and he loves the beach. And he's just oh, gorgeous. Is he a good cuddler? Has he been keeping no, company during ISO? Balls. He hates oh. cuddles. As you were doing that. Oh, you're being serious. It's like, oh. No, he really hates cuddles. All yeah. right, Jenna. Top three favourite things to do on a day off pre-pandemic. Um, go out and get brunch. I love coffee and I love eating. So brunch is the best meal. <laughs> I um, love eating too so much. <laughs> Um, and I love just like going to a cafe, sitting outside, sun's on me, drinking my coffee, mm. eating my food, real great. Cosmo can come with me because we sit outside. Um, and we, we like to go to the beach. Um, and the third thing, um, relax, just like chill. <laughs> what else do I do with my life? Yeah. <laughs> chill. Without basketball, what? <laughs> yeah, doesn't happen too often. That's it. Have you learned any new skills during this isolation period? Um, well, I took up, took up uh, origami for a little bit, but it was just too much paperwork. Really? No, that was a dad joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, you just whipped out a dad joke on me. I didn't even understand it. My gosh. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> That's okay. I've got some more for you later. Um, <laughs> No, not really. Um, like I did some puzzles and just been reading a lot. Um, but no, no, no real new skills. I'm not getting into like yoga, stretching, flexi. Yep. Yep. Wrapped with it. And a lot of other girls, Coley and Amy both were heavily into the cooking and baking now becoming very domesticated. Oh, yeah. Didn't you hear her last week? She literally said she's wifey material now because she can cook. <laughs> Well, during um, <sighs> early on in lockdown, we were doing like a Friday night. We would cook. We, yeah. She's getting better. Okay. Maybe she's learning from, um, from Rosie. Yeah, that's it. Big time. Okay. Netflix, movies. What are you binging right now? What are people supposed to be watching? So um, it's not Netflix. It's Stan. 
But yep. Grey's Anatomy, I started from the very start, like at the beginning of the year. There are so many episodes, so many seasons, and it's set in Seattle. So it's really cool to watch it and be like, oh, that's near Birdie's house or, oh, yeah. that's near where I lived in 2015 or, um, oh, I remember I went there, blah, blah, blah. So I've really been enjoying Grey's Anatomy. Um, and then I also watched um, Drive to Survive. Have you seen that yeah, right. one? No. So it's um, like Kardashians and F1 driving mixed together. <laughs> so I've never watched F1 before. Um, but this Drive to Survive, it's like a yeah, documentary style about the F1 racing. And so there's um, 10 teams with two drivers in each team. And so the two drivers like compete against one another because they're driving the same car, but then also competing against the other teams, obviously. So it's, I think it's two or three seasons um, and it's just real great. So they're the two so I recommend. So where does the Ka Kardashians come into this? <laughs> it's like reality. Oh, okay, right. Because so it's, it's like, like real life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. And I was like, drama oh. because the two, like, they crash into each other because they're like, oh, trying to okay. Break and all that kind of stuff. My gosh. It's all about the drama, oh, isn't it? <laughs> I have another one. Um, selling Sunset, which is also oh. Kardashians mixed with, um, like, selling mansions. It is incredible. I highly recommend Selling Sunset. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Big time. It's an incredible show, that one. Yes. Christine Quinn, just oh. queen of everything. Just just makes you wish you had all that money, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And those okay. houses that they show on that show are incredible. Yeah, I know. $40 million mansions we're talking about right here. Amazing. What else okay, so. Oh, no. Oh, I'm in the middle of watching Lost right now. So, oh, I'm, I'm yeah. That. Big time. I know. But again, on Stan, they've got all the seasons on there. And this is back when seasons had 21 episodes a season. Yeah. Same with Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. So you can just power. I mean, it's been taken up all my time. It's great. Really into it at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So before we get into the very important and very personal quick fire questions, I've got to ask you, what shoes are you rocking with this season? Oh, I've got um, Me Asics. Um, <laughs> Me Asics. Some, yeah. Um, Asics, some court shoe. They're white <laughs> with teal. So they match great. There you go. Um, I don't actually know what they are, though. Just a real pretty Just torch shoe. Whipping out the ASICs. Yep. Teal and white. Yep. Love it. Yep. yep. Big time. Yeah. Okay. Quick fire. Quick questions. Quick answers. You know the drill, Jenna. Are you ready? No. Nah. <laughs> okay. We're going to do it anyway. <laughs> okay. Great. How long have you been playing basketball for? I think it's 28 years. Okay. <laughs> No comment. What did your pathway look like? <laughs> when I was thinking about it yesterday, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so long. Can I actually say 28? But I said it. There we go. And it's funny because um, I'm 27 years old too. So it's like, you've been playing for longer than I've been alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> All right. What did your pathway look like? Um, I think pretty typical for a Victorian, um, played junior basketball for Nana Wadding, made state teams, made all Australian camps, went to the AIS, um, played WNBL, um, junior Australian team, senior Australian teams, WNBA, Europe, WNBL. Perfect. Yeah. Any other sport? Yes. I played netball growing up. Vomit. <laughs> what was it's it like? It's a real great sport and I think it really helped with my basketball and it got to the point where I got an AIS scholarship for basketball, so I chose basketball. I played it Fair right enough. up until I couldn't play it anymore. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. What was it like growing up with two older brothers? The best. So uh, Matthew's five years older than me, Luke is seven years older than me, so it was like having sort of two extra dads, I guess. They just looked after me and protected me um, and they're... I, I love them. They're great. You yeah. know what it's like. So nice to hear. Describe yourself in three words. <sighs> Inquisitive, because I just ask a million questions and I just want to learn more all the time. Uh, I think I'm like a social introvert. So if I know you well, then I'm okay. But in sort of like new situations or new people, I'm a bit shy. Um, and then I'm going to stick with the eyes and say independent. Nice. They are very, very great words. 
and very they very are you. Good research. <laughs> Cats or dogs person? Yep. Favorite <laughs> favorite animal besides a stock standard pet? I think a dolphin. <gasps> Why? Um, they're just like quite um like graceful through the water and they seem very kind and very non-threatening, um, very like smooth. I don't know. Just can they're pretty. can you give us a can you give us a dolphin sound? Don't, at- don't attempt. I'm not going to attempt. I know what sound they make. I'm not going to do it though. Oh, please go. What subjects were you good at at school? <laughs> Coley said the same thing. Favorite music. I was music. not good at maths and I was not good at science. Fair enough. Favorite yeah. music. Uh, I'll listen to a bit of everything, but during lockdown, I've just been heavy on the podcast so i haven't listened to a lot of music recently podcast recommendation oh got plenty depends what you're into at the moment i'm listening to trace which is about um nicola gobbo the lawyer x who um was the lawyer for all the drug kings back in the day and how she informed on them all so that's been real great trace um and then what else do i listen to oh anything on jeffrey epstein just because I still find that whole thing unbelievable. Um, You're big on the crime. Yes, yes. Mm. And then uh, Dissect is, you might like Dissect actually. It um, breaks down different um, albums. So they've got like Kendrick, Lauren Hill, um, Kanye, Beyonce, different albums that they do. Um, and sort of break down the lyrics, the music. Uh, so real great. Yeah, I've definitely heard of Dissect. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Favourite food? Chips and chocolate. <gasps> How dare you put a question of mine in your answer? Hot chips or chocolate? <laughs> They're both my favourite. <laughs> Hot chips or chocolate? <laughs> I just said they both my favourite. <laughs> All right, I'll accept it because I, I wouldn't be able to decide either. That is so smart by you, Jenna, you little snake. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. Best oh. cafe in... Actually, I did, I did hear, I think it was Amy's response. And yeah, coffee in the morning, tea at night. Absolutely. Yeah. I love a peppermint tea before bed. Cannot go without coffee. Because what do you call a sad coffee? Is this a dad joke? What? I just espresso. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good one, actually. You were full of them today. This is epic. <laughs> Best cafe in Melbourne. <sighs> It's just so hard. There's so many. Um, I think I was really enjoying Lenny um, in that two weeks we were allowed out in June, um, which is close to me. Um, I like fourth chapter, seeing you there before with your ma. Um, So I'll go those two. Yeah, nice. Favourite country visited? Yeah, you definitely said visited. So I'm going to go Czech Republic. Solid. Winter, summer, spring, or autumn? You just said winter and summer on there. Yeah, well, you've got to... I think we'll change, put all the season in there. Let them have a chance too. <laughs> Don't um, question my questions. <laughs> yes, <I> was. <laughs> Um Summer. I do like the weather in spring because it's not like too hot, but I get allergies, so don't really appreciate that. Winter, definitely not. Okay, so warmer months. Yes. Yeah. Your perfect holiday would look like? Ah, oh, yeah. So I went to Hawaii for the first time last year, and it is my ultimate holiday because you can wake up in the morning, do like these awesome hikes, and see just incredible views. And then just lay by the beach or the pool for the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, so nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, if, like, I like to adventure but relax. So, yeah, hikes in the morning and then relax with a cocktail in the afternoon. Mm, lovely. Sounds beautiful. Gosh, I wish I could do that right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> Kills you. One day. Oh, if you weren't a basketball player, you would be? Oh, yeah. I'd be a tennis player because I can follow somewhere around the world because I like the heat. My entourage comes with me. They wear real cute outfits and 
women get paid the same amount as men, even though women technically play less because it's three sets over five sets. So that just is the ultimate right there. That, that's a really great answer. So, so good, right? Imagine making that kind of money as well. <laughs> right. And then you just like have your favorite people flying with you everywhere. Yeah. Beautiful. Kill all outfits, good sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Game day rituals. Yeah, I don't really have many. I just like to get there early and get shots up without anyone else on without anyone else on the ring so that I can get into like a good rhythm. Yeah, nice. Wine of choice. Um red Pinot. Mm, solid. Yeah. Jacobs. Oh, I do need to give a shout out to Pepper Jack though. Pepper oh. I can't beat PJ. Good the old PJ. Of the Southside Flyers. Yeah. <laughs> Every road trip. Little sneaky PJ? Surely. <laughs> okay. Love the PJ. Most famous person you've ever met? I, I think I'm going to say Mark Wahlberg. <gasps> Mark and Mark. I love Mark Wahlberg so much. Yeah. I met him in um, a store in LA. Oh, did you get a photo? Well, this was like my first year in LA. So that was like 2011. So the whole like, I don't even know if I had a real like yeah. camera phone then, um, but definitely like chatted with him and he was buying um, a, uh, I think it was a Lakers jersey for his son. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, oh, the sparks are good too. <laughs> <laughs> and that was your in straight, just yeah. beeline straight for him. <laughs> Pretty much. That's awesome. Okay. If you could date a celeb, who would it be? Oh my gosh. Michael B. Jordan. He is so mm. funny. Best pump up song. I really like Power by Kanye. Yeah. Solid. Okay, I feel like you've already provided us with two dad jokes. This is your opportunity if you want to throw in a third. If not, it's totally fine because <laughs> I will what's not get the, it anyway. <laughs> what's the difference between a hippo and a zippo? What? One's really heavy and the other is just a little lighter. <laughs> I love it. Did you come up with these yourself or is this from your actual dad? <laughs> um, so... Nah, well, I had to look some up because a lot of mine are not family friendly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what I've got for you. Okay. I'm just scrolling up through the comments now. I'm going through some questions that people have asked. So we've got one here saying, what will we need to get to go one better this season? What will we have to do to go one better this season? It's still like, <laughs> hurts me so deep from last year because we lost by a total of five points. Yeah. In both Each games. Each game yeah. was one possession. Yeah. It hurts. Um, so I think, I think Canberra have had their core group together for quite a few years. Um, so I think just the fact that majority of our core group is coming back again, I think that's going to be really helpful. Um, yeah. We don't know what the season's going to look like this year in terms of um, amount of games, where we're going to be playing, all that kind of stuff. But I think um, this season, health is going to be a real factor for everyone. Yeah, big time. Um, FIBA rules or WNBA rules? <laughs> I'm going to say FIBA rules because the amount of times I got caught three seconds defensively in the key in America was not okay. I just, I would just, I'd just be standing in there because I'm taught to be on split line. But yeah, the that's day, it. That's not it. So, um, yeah. yeah, I'll go FIBA just because it's what I'm more used to. Yeah. And WBA, you get six fouls, right? You do. That's always handy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, how did you deal with missing the Rio Olympic selection and now captaining the Opals? Um, <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> well, how did I deal with it? Um, it was out of my control. So there was an, I just kept trying to get better. 
Um, kept trying to work on my game. Um, I didn't watch many games at the Rio Olympics um, because I found it hard to watch. Um, and also I was in America at the time. So the time they were showing more American games than they were Australian games. Um, but yeah, I found it really difficult. Um, and I'm very thankful to um, be back in the squad um, and in the team. And yeah, it's, it's still, um, still, I don't know if it's quite hit me yet that I'm really the captain of the team. Yeah. Uh, so just um, trying to, I just try and do my best every time I'm with the Opals. And you definitely do, that's for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to, obviously, Joe Ingalls challenge you in one-on-one. Who's going to win? <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Don't accept that, Jenna. Bro, my gosh. Just make him drive. What is he, 6'7", 6'8"? He can shoot the three. He drives me. I don't know. He's <laughs> starter of the NBA. What am I supposed to do with that? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Who are you most excited to see play this upcoming season, Sammy, Alana, or Ezzy? Oh. That's a really good question. I'm excited to see them all. Obviously, I haven't seen Alana in the WNBL, so that'll be great. Um, I'm not looking forward to chasing Sammy off some screens. I'll leave that to you and Beck, I reckon. <laughs> um, but excited to see her light up the court again, uh, like she did back when she played. Um, and just... Ezzy's growth and development year to year, day to day, week to week has just been incredible to watch. So I'm excited to see what she brings back to the WBL after being in the WBA. Yeah, lovely. So that's um, not an art <laughs> No, but I'm with you there. Like everything you said is true with me too. That's how I see it as well. Yeah. Um, we've got one here saying, my son, Zach, who's six years old, wants to know why Jenna uses dad jokes when she's not a dad. <laughs> Why are they called dad jokes? Because they're lame. They can be a dad lame. I think so, because dads wear like jeans with New Balance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it's just like the nay, like they're dad jokes, but they're just jokes at the end of the day. So I like yeah. telling them. All right. Oh, this is a this is a good one. Have you ever felt like giving up mentally and physically in basketball? Um. Oof, that's a deep question. Mm. Um, when I was uh, cut from Seattle in 2017, mentally I really struggled. Um, struggled with knowing what my worth was um, and whether I was going to continue to play basketball. Um, and it took coming back to Australia and playing under Guy Malloy um, to really get that love back. So um, during that period, I did really struggle mentally. Um, and I think physically... Um, I've dealt with a lot of injuries over the years. Um, so it's been hard, but I love the game of basketball. So I do whatever I can to get back onto the court physically. Yeah. Lovely. What do you think you were better at offense or defense? <laughs> offense. <laughs> yeah. Right. But you can't neglect defense. <laughs> Not at all, but, um, yeah. Off yeah. Offense. Yeah. Okay, who has the best handles crossover in WNBA? In WNBA. Jewel Lloyd has a pretty tight handle. Um, Chelsea Gray, I just mm. love her moves. Um, I'm trying to think. Who else? I'll, I'll keep it at those two, I think. Yeah, nice. That's solid. All right, and last one, because this this has gone for pretty long. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been great, though. You're getting lots of questions, too. Oh, that's how great. Yeah, right? How beneficial is it to have the vast majority of the Opals the to in, from the Tokyo Olympic Games squad playing in the WNBL for this season? Oh, yeah, it'll be great. Um, yeah. It means the league will be really strong. Um, and hopefully we can get some camps together, meaning because majority, like, I don't know what the world is going to look like come 
whatever month it is that we can get together. But I think with majority of us here, I think only Beth Allen is going to be in Europe. I think everyone else is in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully that means we can get together a little bit more so that we're fully prepared come Tokyo um, in July. So I think it's great. And I think the league's going to be super strong. Um, we don't have imports this year, um, just with the state of the world. So I think um, there's going to be plenty of um, players who haven't got opportunity in, opportunities in the past that are going to be playing lots of minutes. And I'm excited to see them flourish and um, see what they can do. Yeah, absolutely. And one more question, actually. I said the last one, but one, one more now. Yeah, sure. uh, Three spot or four spot? Um, my favourite position is the three spot, but just whatever. I've played one to four my entire career. So whatever <laughs> the team needs at the time is what I'm going to do. But if I was to pick, I would say three. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Just yeah. get, to, get to shoot the buckets outside, you know. <laughs> Although I like that um, I do... For the Flyers, I do really like the four spot because mm. I feel like a lot of our offense um, sort of like runs through the four. So I have yeah. a bit of um, control about where the ball goes and who the ball is going to. Um, so I did, yeah, I, I, I do like both. Yeah, big time. Well, yeah. Jen, you've been just wonderful and very informative for this morning. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for having me. That was great. And next week, I can confirm that we have the one and only Leilani Mitchell coming on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the way from the hub. I cannot wait to just rip into that girl. I'm so I excited. If she's going to say the rat bag is. Me. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> Maybe <Good> you. <laughs> Cheryl's the rat bag. <laughs> she is a bit of a rat bag. Nah, yeah. Snelly. That's it. No, I really appreciate you coming on, guys. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Appreciate your questions. They were awesome as well. So have a good rest of your weekend and enjoy the rest of the ISO, guys. Thanks, Jen. Oh, Bye, see you, Cosmo. Cosmo. Saying goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye. Give a, oh, look at that face. <laughs> Maybe we'll just leave you on for another five minutes while you just play with Cosmo. <laughs> All right. Bye. See you, Jen. Good work. Bye. Bye. <laughs>